Hi, it's Dr. Steve here from Curology.com bringing you more about ovarian cyst cures, the second video in this educational series. First of all, do you really have a cyst and why do you say that? Did the doctor tell you? Is it suspected? Is it proven by ultrasound? These are all important questions. But what might be the symptoms of an ovarian cyst? Well, pain is the first thing that comes to mind. This can be between periods or pain that does not go away, crampy pain, it could be severe, it could be mild, it could be really many kinds of pain, and other things in your pelvis can certainly cause pain as well, but cysts are certainly at the forefront, so you should be checked out. Abnormal vaginal bleeding is not caused by ovarian cysts per se, but you'll learn in a second it could be a very related issue due to hormonal cycles being off. Pelvic pressure uh, it could be due to a larger cyst pushing down in your bladder or rectum. And if you're pregnant, it could be a very different story. Can a pregnancy, for example, be in your tube, which is a surgical emergency? Uh, or there are some specialized cysts that happen in pregnancy. So knowing whether or not you're pregnant is important here. Also, did you just start having periods? Or is menopause near? Cysts are much more common around these times when your hormones are fluctuating uh, widely either at the beginning or the end of your reproductive life, which is roughly between the early teens and early 50s. So before you choose treatment options, how about a more basic question or two? Why? Because if you don't know this, you may be thinking you have something you don't have, and you may be making the wrong decisions. So learn a little bit about anatomy and physiology first, which we'll go into, then how cysts form, and then get into natural treatment options or any treatment options for that matter. Your ovaries are located deep in the pelvis on both sides of the uterus. They're suspended there by something called ligaments, which are really soft bridges of tissue between the uterus and the ovary, and up higher also by another set of ligaments containing the ovary's main blood supply. The ovary actually gets a rich blood supply from all around itself, so it's well nourished in that way. The brushy end of the fallopian tube is also very close, gently sweeping over the surface of the ovary, looking for eggs to pick up and move into the uterus when you're about the time of ovulation. The ovaries are also part of a very detailed and intricate concert of hormones, which are going up and down, responding to hormones that come to it from the brain, thyroid, adrenal gland, and other places, and making hormones as well. The main two hormones you hear about are estrogen and progesterone, but there are many, many more, and there are many biochemical variations of all of these hormones. It's really like a concert if you, start th if you stop and think about it. Imagine if a symphony orchestra conductor suddenly stops doing their job in delicately coordinating which instruments play what and when. Things obviously go way off course, and it's no longer a great concert, but a bunch of noise from a bunch of different instruments playing their own thing in no particular order. In a similar way, if something causes this delicate hormonal concert to stray from normal, a lot of things happen, including ovarian cyst formation. This is often really a symptom or indicator that something is wrong and how your hormonal system is playing in this concert. Looking at the structure or microanatomy of the ovary, the figure on the right, the ovaries are loaded with eggs, and as each month in the reproductive years goes by, the supporting follicles that nurture the eggs go through a hormonally dependent cycle of maturation or growth, then the egg comes out and the follicle atrophies after it does its job and gets absorbed by the ovary. This is way oversimplified, but in general, that's what normally happens. This chart represents the reproductive cycle going from left to right of what happens in the ovary, your temperature, it goes up during ovulation, the hormones, and what happens inside your uterus. After menarche, or the beginning of periods in an adult woman, the reproductive cycles marked by your having periods every month involves both the ovaries and the uterus as eggs are prepared, released, the uterus prepares to possibly hold a baby if sperm comes along at the right time and fertilizes the egg. And then, if there's no fertilization, a period occurs. And the tissue that was being prepared in the uterus sloughs off and you have your, pain, your bleeding and your period. Um, then the ovary and uterus go back to the beginning of the cycle. 
and it goes over again. The concert then is extended to both the ovaries and the uterus and all is controlled by hormones, basically in the middle of this graph, which are going up and down in a very coordinated way. If any of these things don't go right, something throws them off. You have problems with pain, bleeding, cyst formation, and more. This can happen once in a while, or it can happen during every cycle. Depends on my, upon what might be wrong. After menopause, these cycles don't happen. So if a cyst is found after menopause, it was either carried with you silently without symptoms, and it just froze in time, so to speak, or there's something wrong, like possibly an ovarian tumor, which can be either benign or cancerous. So how exactly do cysts form? Well, based on what I just said in the normal cycle, tiny cysts, less than a half an inch or one centimeter in size, come and go all the time. But if they keep growing and filling with fluid or blood and don't go away, this is where the problem starts. It's usually due to hormonal imbalance, but what does that mean? This means that the stimulating brain hormones or the stress-producing adrenal hormones or the ovarian hormones have simply moved away from normal cycling and intensity. This can be due to a laundry list of factors including metabolic diseases like diabetes or prediabetes or thyroid problems. Fortunately, most of the time it's not a disease but rather a problem with metabolism and lifestyle which can be corrected. Prescription drugs, lifestyle choices, and herbs or natural solutions are all possible options. I'll repeat this also because it's very important. The cysts are different from tumors, which usually require surgical treatment. By the way, sometimes dermoids are called cysts. This is actually not right. These are actually benign tumors and will not go away with non-surgical options. These are all ultrasound pictures um, of cysts on the left and in the middle, and then a tumor on the right, which looks like a cyst, but it's not. Simple cysts have a single fluid-filled cavity with kind of a thin wall, and certainly no internal solid parts. Sometimes, uh, well, actually, something that looks like this is very unlikely to be cancerous. Most commonly, they're functional, follicular, or what's called luteal cysts. Uh, but most importantly, these come and go all the time, and they're really not likely to be a tumor. So-called complex cysts on ultrasound may have more than one compartment, uh, which is on the right, thicker, solid wall. Uh, it can have papillations or projections into the inside of the ovary or on the surface. So anyway, an ultrasound really helps determine what might be going on to determine the difference in these pictures and also sometimes simple functional cysts come and go. Uh, in fact, they normally come and go. So in order to tell the difference between a tumor and a cyst that'll come and go, a doctor may repeat an ultrasound in four to six weeks and see if there's been a change. So to read the bottom of the slide first, um, CAT scans or CTs are not very good in the pelvis to figure out what's going on in your ovaries, but the MRI uh, may be helpful if your doctor thinks you have endometriosis and the cyst might be what's called an endometrioma. But let's talk about the more common situation and what might be added to a regular ultrasound. This picture is of a color flow ultrasound, which may help identify how blood flows through the cyst area and help tell whether it's a cyst or a tumor, and if it's a tumor, whether it's benign or malignant. If your doctor's saying that the, that the cyst may be a tumor, then you can amaze him or her by asking, what is my risk of malignancy index, or RMI? This is useful, and it's a published formula in the medical journals, which helps prepare you for possible surgery, if it may be a tumor, and to determine if a regular gynecologist or a cancer specialist should be available. It's especially helpful if you're past or near menopause and involves getting a blood test called the CA-125. Again, this is only if your doctor is saying it might be a tumor and not just a simple cyst based on ultrasound. If it looks like a simple cyst, this is not something that needs to be done. But the more worrisome the cyst looks, the more this RMI, or Risk of Malignancy Index, can help decide what to do. So, other than surgery, which is reserved for emergencies like internal bleeding or surgery for a suspected ovarian tumor, the mainstream medical treatment is mainly through birth control pills for most ovarian cysts. 
Now that you've learned how variances form in general, you should see the connection. No ovulation means no egg supporting follicle development, which means no functional cysts are being formed. Just like preventing pregnancy, the birth control pill helps prevent most simple or functional ovarian cysts. Anyone who says different may also believe the world is flat. It's really science, and it's basic science, and it's irrefutable. So why not just stay on birth control pills and pain medications? Because like any other prescription medication, there can be side effects. So seeking a more natural solution is reasonable in the long run. Natural approaches are based on these three principles. First, creating a more balanced hormonal function and restoring the symphony orchestra-like environment is crucial. This can take some time, but it is accomplished by reducing stress hormones, improving metabolism, which can affect other hormones, and avoiding external xenohormones. Second, you have 20 to 30 billion fat cells in your body. In addition to your ovaries, they can convert other hormones into estrogen to where you have too much estrogen in your body. So fat reduction via exercise and assist-reducing diet are central to all this. Third, supplements and herbs which are anti-inflammatory and affect specific metabolic pathways in your body, including fish oils, can help accelerate your recovery and cyst prevention. You have to be careful as some of these can harm you, especially if you end up needing surgery. So you need to learn a few more details regarding all of this. In addition to cyst prevention, there are a number of ways you can naturally help reduce cyst forming pain. And I gave you one of the tips in the last video, but there are others. This is just an introduction to all these concepts. I'm putting together a full multimedia course for you to cover all this in detail. But for now, this information will set you on the right track and there's more in my ebook. So if you have a surgical emergency due to bleeding or severe pain due to twisting of the ovary, for example, your choices are limited. On the other hand, you could still focus on prevention of more cysts after surgery. If you have something that may be a tumor, then surgery is really the best bet. And if that's what it turns out to be, a tumor, additional treatments are not cyst-based. On the other hand, if it turns out to be a cyst and not a tumor, you will also want to try to prevent cysts in the future. Remember that in terms of mainstream treatments, birth control pills may represent a very good short-term solution. Works better for some and not for others, and as always, work with a trusted doctor since your situation is individual and may be very different from the next person for many, many reasons. The same is true for discussion of any natural treatment plans that you may have. Keep your doc informed. So what natural choices do you have? If you want to really get to the root of things, lifestyle choices are key and are central to naturally keeping your cysts away. Some herbal and natural solutions have scientific evidence supporting them, and some, or actually many, don't. Depends on the type of cyst that you have. So you can take your chances and randomly try things that people said may have worked for them, or focus on things that are most likely to work through science. In the end, it's your choice. I think you could do it, you just have to be an active participant in your health rather than a passive recipient of health care plans. Anyway, congratulations. By now, you know more than most women will ever know about ovarian cysts. And if you like what you've heard and want to learn more, please consider my ebook, which goes into more detail on everything we talked about so far, as well as more natural treatment options. This is Dr. Steve, urging you to take action. Take control of your health and take care.